Hello, everybody. Those pre-orders are up. Who wants to get 15% off and be a cool kid? Me, I do. Uh, one sec while I uh, get this stream URL copied and pasted. I'll retweet that last thing with a comment and say, Not a fucking link. What the fuck kind of link is that? Oh my god, come on. Why does it give you the wrong link on this fucking thing? God, okay, here we go. I've tweeted the link. Now I have to do this. I have to pop out the chat as per usual. I have to move some things over. I have to, what is this? Make the chat bigger. All right, I have only a tiny bit of water. We're gonna have to make do. Okay, the plastic cadaver is right over here. It's just off, off camera, it's out of focus. And the office is complete chaos. If you could see on the side, it's just, there's just cardboard everywhere. Um, I'll give you a little tour. See, there's cardboard over here. I can't even see the fucking thing. There's lots of cardboard, lots of paper. Lots of stuff in the cadaver is over behind me. <laughs> and you can see back, way back in the back, ah, way back there, under the Meat Boy magazine cover, there is a cool diorama, or a few actually. I'm still uh, working on the trailer stuff. I start recording the trailer stuff today, which is uh, hectic on my end because I have to kind of pick up the I have to become a, a, a movie movie editor so I'm gonna film a bunch of stuff and uh, try to edit it together and teach myself uh, whatever I have for video editing software Adobe uh, movie game maker okay so you guys know that pre-orders are live you can pre-order the game right now. I tweeted a link and it gives you 15% off if you pre-order. Um, and there's still you're still going to get 10% off if you buy it at launch or uh, within, I think, the first couple of days of launch. I'm not p positive. Um, but it's better to get, get the loyalty discount if you uh, pre-order early. And I think it's a pretty safe bet. I know some people are against pre-orders, but... 
um, you guys have seen the game. <laughs> it's not, I'm not hiding anything from you. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, let's see, should we answer a few questions first? Let's, let's answer a few questions. If you have, if you have questions about Bumbo or about pre-ordering or about steam release or about development or anything like that, I'll answer them um, as quickly as possible here, and then we'll dive into, um, well, for me, this is testing, honestly. When I stream, I'm testing. Uh, right before this, I was also testing, and I was playing through, um, and I had a really busted run. It was pretty good. And uh, currently, the build has a bunch of edits and fix. All the items are in the game, which is about 201, I think, items. Uh, mostly spells. I think it's 120 something spells and the rest trinkets. But trinkets in this are a little heavier than on in, in Isaac because they're essentially passive spells. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, as a developer, what do you think about achievements? Do you hate the stuff or not? I heard a lot hate those. Uh, I heard a lot hate those because they don't want to waste time thinking of stuff like that. Um, Achievements are pretty easy. I don't hate them. Um, I think achievements are cool. It's it's another way to get people to like do specific things that might be more fun for them to try to do. Uh, Bumbo has achievements. Not positive that they'll be there at launch, but you'll retroactively unlock them if you've achieved the right things. But yes, there are, I put achievements in all my games and uh, I don't mind making them. Uh, the camera moves from the puzzle board to the attack is a bit weird because it moves the mouse. Will you guys change that? It doesn't move the mouse. I mean, it moves the mouse. I guess what you're saying is like, since it, if you have your mouse over this one area and it scrolls forward, it moves to the side just slightly. So your mouse would be in a different area. That is something that we've talked about. Um, but it might cause a lot of problems. So it might be something that we have to explore after launch if we do explore it. But I, I do know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about. And um, I agree it's a little a little jarring uh, that it's not directly in the same place. So your, your cursor might move to the side. But um, for the most part, it hasn't been that much of a problem. And no one's really brought it up. Uh, so we'll see. It's, if, it's, if it's not totally broken, we're not going to fix it. Um, if it becomes broken and people are like, oh, I can't deal with this, then of course we'll probably do it in post at this, at this point. We've got... Uh, six days, and um, who's messaging me? Okay, one second. Wow, everybody's retweeting. Uh, yeah, it would help if you guys retweet that pre-order link. I don't ever know how to like ask and be like, hey, everybody, if retweet this so more people will see it. Um, it's usually a given if you guys feel like you're retweeting. But this is a situation where I want people to know that it's the pre-orders are up. So please, please retweet. Um, okay. Where was I? Pre-order it on Switch. No, we don't even have a publisher for Switch yet. So no. It's uh, the game won't even be in development for Switch until after it launches. Probably, it probably won't be in, actually in development until the end of the year. Um, but yeah, it will eventually come out on Switch. That's the goal. Maybe on other consoles too. Who knows? As you guys probably under, could understand the uh, the controversy with Nicholas and then not using them as a publisher, they would have been able to be doing it now, but then the stuff happened and. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't, it was, it was, it caused a big mess and I was far too busy in crunch to go out and start shopping for a new, uh, publisher and it's a, it's a headache, but <clears throat> we're going to figure it out. And obviously we know that you guys want, uh, it on switch. And of course I do too. Um, but it's a situation too, where if it, if we come up with a nice control scheme for the mount, the cursor, a cursor based game, uh, then why not have it come out for more than just switch? 
mod compatibility built in? No, at least not currently. I'm not sure how it works with Unity, so I'm not sure. Uh, Windows or Mac too? Uh, currently, it's Windows only. We're going to launch on Windows only because uh, Mac, there are issues with Mac currently. Um, when it comes to, you have to like jump through a few hoops in order to get published and sign a bunch of stuff and it's not something I want to do and it came out of the blue a lot of people are kind of against it at this point and they just kind of made it a big headache to do anything uh, so so far no but maybe down the road um, what hour will the game release on the 12th the last couple games that I've put out release are at 10 um, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time I um, hope that helps the game, you can see what it cost if you pre-ordered it. <laughs> the game cost $14.99 on Steam, and uh, you get 15% off if you pre-order it. Have you done coding for the game? No, I don't program. I don't program at all. Don't like to program. Have no interest in programming. Um, James did all of the programming, and James did, you know, 95% of all the 3D and animation stuff. Um, Alex Hicks helped with some of the 3D. I think mostly like the the intro, uh, I believe it was the intros for each of the chapters and some other minor stuff. Um, how come you didn't choose to add item names to the items, such as Stem Cell or Chaos? Okay, so I initially thought that it might be fun just to do icons, seeing as that everybody has different funny names for different things, and I kind of enjoyed the idea of streamers and players in general trying to describe different items because either way you have the effect and you can say, Oh, it's this item and they'll know what it is, but then you can try to describe what I drew. Um, I'm realizing now that that's not exactly what people want. Um, so one of the things that's currently on our list, which probably won't get in for launch, but we'll probably get in post is a redesign for the items. So when you pick them up, it'll tell you their name. Um, it won't tell you their name when, when you already have them in your, in your HUD but it'll at least give you the name that I named them because they're all named um, when you pick the spell up. So then you'll have some idea of what they are. Pretty much the same as an Isaac. I mean, it's just icons and Isaac. Um, Pre-order bonus. The pre-order bonus is that you get 15% off. That's a bonus. Um, will Bumbo come to PS4? Like I was saying before, um, we've got to tackle the how do we make how do we make a controller work with a cursor based game? And once we cross that bridge, if it works really well, there's no reason why I assume there's no reason why our publisher wouldn't want to publish on multiple platforms. Um, do you anticipate as much of a modding community for Bumbo as Isaac? No, not at all. I don't think there's much in terms of modding that can be done that will be that entertaining uh, with Isaac's different because there's a bit of a sandboxness to Isaac and this is more like the puzzle aspect doesn't make sandboxing as interesting is the legend of bumbo canon well yeah everything yes everything I say is will the soundtrack be available to buy as well yes um uh, the soundtrack will be on Steam as well as on Bandcamp. It's really good, as you guys have heard. Um, and Ridiculum will, will pop it up. Okay. Why does it do that? I barely scroll down. Okay. I'm just going to go to the bottom. I'm sorry. I missed a bunch of stuff. Um, okay. Where... Can we have a peek at the trailer set behind you? I can't move it. If I if I even touch the side of it, everything falls. And it's a mess. <laughs> I'm just trying to get as much use out of it as possible now. Um, and trying to take as many pictures as possible so I can use stuff for promos. Um, and hopefully box art. Uh, I, need, I currently need to take some higher resolution pictures. And then most of the stuff that's in the box it actually has to be reused for the trailer. So for the trailer, what I'm going to do is a bunch of shots in a smaller diorama lit differently, maybe with some slightly colored lighting 
um, just slow pans of different scenes. So it'd be like the Duke of Flies with a bunch of suspended flies in front of him. So it looks like he's like horfing them out and then do a slow pan that way. And then maybe I'll put all the characters from the casino or the wooden nickel all in one place and do a slow pan. So I, I, I'm just going to get a bunch of footage with a bunch of enough of a gap to have some sort of text that says something about the game. And I think I'll like cut through all those. So it gives you like information and then cut to take a bunch of gameplay and then just cut it. Um, at least that's, that's my goal. Slightly worried and stressed about that, but I'm sure it'll get done. And that's that. Um, okay. Is the platformer engine that Tyler's working on related to you? Uh, I assume so. Uh, I, we, I mean, I suggested working on uh, possibly a new platformer after uh, Legend of Bumbo was finished, but Tyler really just wants to double down on Eugenics, so we're going to do that first. But yeah, um, I want to use that tile engine for sure. Don't know what for, though. How fun was working on this game? Uh, I, If I'm being completely honest, the first couple years weren't very, very fun at all. It was just a lot of work and not a lot of payoff. Uh, when you're making a, a strategy game, a turn-based game especially, or even a puzzle game, you need every component of the game working in tandem uh, for it to feel fun. And it did not work because not all the pieces were together until this year. Um, and then it didn't start getting really fun until about five, five or six months ago. And it started getting more fun as, as it goes. It's the most fun now. Right now, this build is the most fun. Hopefully the launch build will be even more fun. Um, and when the game is fun, you have more fun working on it. So you could say um, I'm doing more fun stuff right now. Like the diorama stuff is fun. Um, the trailer stuff can be slightly fun. Testing is fun. Um, and press can be relatively fun. So now, now fun. Uh, but for you know the three plus years we worked on this thing, it was mostly work. And it was stressful too because... Uh, you know, James doesn't, didn't really have a financial situation to be like, yeah, I'm just going to just work on this constantly and not do any kind of work. So we had to figure that out and we were fortunate enough to find a publisher on, uh, which was called the label. I don't know if they're still called the label or not, but they, they helped fund the project, which mostly just went to James floating for the next couple of years. So he can actually eat. Um, and of course I helped when that wasn't happening as well. How many playable characters? Uh, we've shown four. There are more than four. Um, maybe there'll be even more than are in the released version eventually. Who knows? You never know. Will the Isaac blog start up again uh, once Bumbo's released? Uh, if we do anything, I think we'll end up using Steam just like we do with, uh, with Bumbo. I think that's probably easier to do because it's all in one place and points directly to the game. No doubt in my mind that we will do stuff like that for sure. I'm sure we'll end up doing live streams and you'll get to meet everybody and it'll be all crazy fun. But uh, realistically, you know, repentance isn't coming out till next year. Um, and uh, that won't be for a little while. Uh, let's see here. I've scrolled down all the way to the bottom again. Uh, I think we'll get blooper clips of the cardboard footage. You know, there are some. There's a lot of stuff falling over and fucking around. Uh, sure. I don't, I'll have to dig through it. Uh, are we going to see a Bumbo the Brave gameplay? I'll let you guys vote on who you want me to play with for this stream. Um, we'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge. Will the game get Steam cards and badges like Isaac? Currently, no. Uh, so the difference between Steam cards, badges, and achievements, like achievements are easy. Steam card stuff can be grueling because there's a lot of art that needs to go into it and stuff needs to be made. The last time we did that was for The End is Nigh and I actually just had fans submit art for all that stuff. And it still took a few days of work. And I can't do a few days of work at this point because we're crunching to release. And just so you guys know... The current state of the game, um, it's got. There's a few bugs that we're that we're you know f fixing up. All the items are in. 
the cutscenes are 99% in. Uh, James is doing the last, probably tonight we'll have the final cutscene that we've been keeping from everybody, uh, polished and in. Um, all the game needs is a few menu tweaks, uh, a credits intro, sound effects. There's like 70 sound effects that aren't in the game yet, which is why it sounds pretty sparse. So that's a big undertaking in itself. Um, and, uh, and then, then just general polish, like just little bits and pieces here and there that we need to punch up. Like, uh, like when you destroy tiles in game, uh, as opposed to make a combo, we want that to look different. So when you like use a bomb or the blender blade, we want it to look like they kind of explode on the screen. And when you gain a coin, we need like a visual pop, um, on the HUD where the coins are. And when you take damage, or gain life, there should be like a pulse of red up at the top of the screen. So it's a little, a bunch of little stuff like that that's simple, won't cause a bunch of bugs, hopefully. Um, and outside of that, I, I believe all the bosses and everybody, they're, they're tuned to my liking. No doubt in my mind, though, at release, there are probably going to be some tweaks in tunes depending on what I see on stream and what people report. Uh, and that's kind of where we're at right now. And we've got six days to do it. It's still very tight, but the foundation of the game is there. Um, when you when when I first heard of this game, when I first heard this game was a match four, I wasn't thrilled. But after seeing uh, you play it, I actually love it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the that's the thing with this is um, I knew going in. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I knew going in. I was redesigning a bejeweled type game. That's that was my initial idea. This is a uh, a game idea that I wanted to do since I played Puzzle Quest. And it's like, oh, Puzzle Quest is really cool, uh, but it does still feel a little bejeweledy in a, in a bad way where it felt lucky. There was a lot of luck, uh, almost too much luck. I would say half luck. Um, and there wasn't a lot of depth to the combat system. It was just your turn and then the other guy's turn and they would do random stuff. Um, but I really, really, really like Puzzle Quest. I thought it was super cool. And that was forever ago. So I always wanted to kind of crack the code on on a match puzzle game type system. And the first thing I did was match four because matching four on the board size that we have makes it a lot more complicated, especially with the number of tiles that we have. There's a lot going on on the, on the board. But yeah, at its core, this game is a match puzzle game. And to try to sell something like that to anybody who is a fan of mine who's played any of my other games, I know it was going to be a big undertaking. So I wanted to just focus on the fact that it was a randomly generated deck builder. That was a puzzle game, a turn-based puzzle game. But I have a feeling when you guys play it, you'll understand how, how fun this system can actually be. It's, it's very fun and rewarding, makes you feel smart. There's layers and layers and layers of strategy. And you can take something as simple as a bejeweledish ish colony type game and turn it into something with a lot of depth and um, I think we achieved that. So I know a lot of people are gonna see it and not be too thrilled, and they're gonna just have to see it played or hopefully have a friend sell it to them um, to really get it. Uh, let's see. Is the opening cutscene from the first trailer still the same? Yes, the intro of the game has always stayed the same. Nothing has changed. <clears throat> um. Let's see. Thank you for all pre-ordering your copies. Uh, it, it's, it's help. Of course, it makes me feel good when you guys pre-order the game a bunch. But uh, you know who, you know who's taking a little sleep right now. He's he's because he's been working all night, and he's gonna wake up to uh, pre-order sales and be very happy knowing that he has a future, James. So he'll be even more excited and grateful for all the support here because this is his first indie launch like this is his first one of these this isn't my first rodeo of course i still get stressed out and i care and all the other good stuff but for james this is a new experience so he's going to get the highs and lows of launch um and uh one of the highs is is seeing that people care about the game enough to pre-order it um let's see how do you feel about releasing Bumbo compared to how it felt when you first released Isaac? Um, when I first released Isaac, I had only invested three months into development. So it was a quick 
flash game ish pick up and play hyper fast development almost throwaway game i felt like it was really honest and probably one of my best games right off the bat it felt so unique it felt like some of my older work um and it didn't feel like i was taking any compromises in the way that i did with something like super meat boy um so putting it out instantly i felt good and even though the reviews weren't great and the sales weren't great initially, uh, it still always felt rewarding because of the, I only spent a few months on it. With Bumbo, there's more pressure because we spent three years on it. Um, it's not like we need to make a shitload of money to make back what we invested, but there's still more pressure in this doing well. Um, I think it'll do fine. I have a lot of confidence in the product for sure. I think it's super fun, um, but I'm always worried. And I worry more so knowing that the person that I'm working with depends on the finances, like depends on the sales a lot more than I do. With um, with The Binding of Isaac, it was three months of development with Florian and he he later told me that he was had absolutely no money at all. And I remember when we finally released the game, he was like, can you send me a check soon? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, yeah, because I don't have any money. I'm like, why didn't you tell me through development? I would have been able to send you some money so you could you could pay rent and everything. And he's like, oh, I didn't want to burden you. And I was like, oh my God. Like he, he said that he literally had nothing for the three months of development and he was almost going to get kicked out of his apartment. And uh, so I didn't know there was stress going on on that side for that. But in the end, it ended up being great. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, fuck. Early development sketches. Um, I never, I didn't pick up the, uh, my sketchbook. I believe it's downstairs. Uh, yesterday on stream, I showed a few things. Uh, fuck. I'm going to have to dig around and see if I can find anything to show you guys. Okay. How hard do you think it will be to add new stuff like DLC to Bumbo? How hard was it to add stuff to the original Flash? Oh, I think it'll be actually really easy to add anything to this. This is one of those situations where a lot of the issues came into building the structures. Like once so everything's in place right now. So adding new items will take a few days. Testing those items will take a few days. Adding new bosses, et cetera. Like it's, um, it'll be a lot easier and, and things shouldn't break as much as if, you know, expanding uh, the Flash version of Isaac. Uh, would I say that people like Northern Lion have helped with the sales of Isaac? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, everybody who's played Isaac, I remember one of the first, I think Zach Scott was one of the first people to play the original Isaac and uh, make it make it like his thing. He, he uh, played the hell out of it. I remember watching him a ton. Um, but for sure, it, it was, um, the game got really popular on the summer after it released, right around when the DLC released. And that was also around the time where like 10 or 15 different Let's Players were, were like living Isaac. And, uh, and then Northern Lion stuck to his guns <laughs> and only played. I Northern Lion played Super Meat Boy. Like uh, uh, I've, I've known him for quite a while. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say I would say streamers, of course, helped. It's hard to quantify sales, though. It's a kind of a weird, funky thing. Like uh, I remember back back in the day. I think PewDiePie played The Binding of Isaac, and I remember thinking, "Oh my God, that's gonna that's gonna mean big sales." And then I'd look at sales, and there was no movement. And um, I would do that every time somebody big would start streaming, and I saw no spike in sales at all. But I do think that there's some subconscious like you can't avoid if a bunch of people are streaming your game and a bunch of people are seeing your stuff. It's like mini advertising it kind of seeps into the subconscious. And I think a lot of people become familiar with an IP. And then when they see news about it or they see it on sale on Steam or whatever else, they might be more inclined to pick it up. But sadly so far, I haven't noticed a correlation between big sales spikes and big streamers streaming the game. But no doubt it gets the word out for sure. And with a game like this, um, or even a game like Isaac, where it may be a hard sell for a lot of people initially, I think people streaming this game would definitely really help. Uh, so stream it up. Uh, let's see. What was the budget 
Oh, I missed that one. What was the budget for Bumbo? Um, the budget for Bumbo was three years of rent, uh, food and rent, like just living. And, um, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't know how much contract work was done there. I mean, a good amount of contract work was done for sound effects. Good amount of contract work was done for, for music, but I don't have the numbers on me, but I would, I would say, I don't know. I don't quantify these things. <laughs> Not a lot. I never spend a huge amount of money, uh, for the most part on development and keep it nice and small. And the bulk of the, the bulk of, bulk of the funding goes into just paying people for music and sound effects or, uh, and like in this case, like 3d stuff. But, uh, I would say that, uh, a lot, this, a lot more money went into this than like, definitely like the end is nigh. Um, but I, I probably not Isaac the remake, um, or, uh, super meat boy and stuff like that. Let's see. Will there be workshop? Probably not. Um, should I start playing? You guys want me to ask more questions? Um, and, uh, I'm unable to gift my friend this game to due to an error. And I think it's because of how many people are buying it at the same time. Uh, well, that'd be nice. I don't think so. Maybe there's just, an, you can't pre-order purchase for a friend or something. Now that I've done a 3D game, uh, do I think I'd be less hesitant to experiment in 3D modeling and make games with 3D environments and designs? Um, I don't know. There is there is one game design that is 3D that I would like to do, and I would like to model it. Um, but chances are if I end up doing it, I'll probably have somebody better. Just do it for me. Have you considered making a Metroidvania? Uh, yeah. Um, the End is Nigh was the closest thing to Metroidvania, but it was kind of a, a weird, you know, spoiler. You have all your abilities from the beginning, but you don't know you have them until you're it tells explained to you what your abilities are. And that's how the End is Nigh kind of works. And there's exploration and stuff. That's the closest thing to Metroidvania Vania that I that I have done. Um, I'm sure I'll fuck with it more the idea later on but for now I feel like I've I've done that kind of um what else play okay now you, you want me to play okay it's time to play it's time to play this game let's explore let's explore the the land of bumbo uh, there's a lot of headroom here Okay. Yeah, I thought the end of night was a Metroidvania. But but hey, it's not as traditional as everybody wants, so do, 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 do. all right. Who should I play with? Should I play with Bumble the Brave, the Nimble, the Stout, or the Weird? What, what do you think? Tell me what you want to see. I should probably put this down or something. Let me see. You guys can see my Cheddar Goblin shirt. Weird. I'm seeing weird. I'm seeing some stouts. I'm seeing weird mostly. I'm seeing stouts again. Oh, it's weird. Weird is what we're doing. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks for uh, my crazy hair. It's a combination of uh, receding hairline and uh, not washing my hair yesterday. Hope you would like it. 
All right. Time to play with the weird. The weird's ability is that they gain moves whenever you kill something. It's really fucking good. It's very fun to play with. They have two spells that they start with. One adds more tiles of the selected type. It's called the magic marker, just so you know. And the other one's called puzzle flick. It's this little puzzle right here. It removes tiles and throws them. It deals damage based on half the number of tiles that you've selected and removed. I see a combo here. All right, so we've already got that going. And we're gonna add more shit. So we need to get a kill in, that's for, for sure. Let's add more, yeah. All right, start the chain. We want to kill this boom fly. <clears throat> Get plus one move. Now, we got two moves, and we can easily get one more kill here and then finish them off. This is an easy room. And we'll just do this. The end. Boop, boop. Watch. Ooh. Oh, these are all new spells. So, yeah, like I mentioned before, a shitload of new spells have gone in over the past couple days. We've got the vacuum cleaner and the beckoning finger. You could say it's mom's finger. I kind of want this. Let's see. Mostly testing for, for bug purposes. Gets an enemy to get closer to me. Why would I want that? Oh, there's got to be a reason. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. 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 Let's see. Let's do this. Uh, we already fucked up. We fucked up. Who cares about the game audio, guys? You really care about the game audio? There, it's higher. Does it really matter? I can fucking make the noise. It sounds like this. That's it. Now you fucked me up, guys. You yelling your goddamn audio all day long. Audio! I'm thinking, who's this? We're getting invaded by somebody streaming audio. Who's this audio streamer I'm hearing so much about? Look at this. Look at the situation. This is all your fucking fault. We've got four. How are we going to do this? This is a this is a terrible fucking situation. This is our only hope and we're fucked. One move? <laughs> it's over. This is, this is, all right, this is your fault. This is all your fault. All of it. There you go. Fucking audio. Yell audio at me while I'm trying to play a game. How do people do this? Your fault. Your fucking fault. All right, let's do it again. We're doing it again. You and your goddamn audio. Okay. I can deal three damage to that butthole over in the corner and kill him. And now I can do this and this and this and this. Look at this. It's like there's nothing even happening here. I'm not going to play as the nimble. I'm going to continue what I'm doing because you guys fucked it up and I wanted to use the beckoning finger and I don't have it anymore. Heal's a half heart, but you barf. Well, he's not going to be mu healing much of jack shit, so we're going to take the uh, skewer and get to destroy a row of tiles. All right. Now what? Now what? 
I can't answer your questions. I got to focus. I don't want to look like a fool. Everybody's watching. You got to pre-order the game. Pre-order the game. The more you pre-order the game, the more more better I do. Right? Okay. One. Oh, that was close. Two. What do we want more of? Bones. All right. Start this. Start chaining this thing. I, that was a bad one. I should have done that over there. Ugh. See, there's nobody to goober now. If I would have killed this fly over here, I could have boogered this guy. And now they're going to kill me. Okay. No, we need we need the t teeth. We need teeth mana. We need to kill that guy. We need to... Let's see. Let me just get rid of these poops. Kill that guy. Mm, kill this guy and then protect ourselves let's see can we kill him now we can do this let's add more what do we need more of teeth right I'm going for gold all right we got it no problem no problem look at that Yeah, if you want me to play better, you have to tell everybody to pre-order it. The more retweets and likes I get, the better I do. It's true. More retweets, more pre-orders. Okay, that's an easy two-move situation here. Hmm. All right, this is good. Let's take out one of these little buttholes. We got one move. Okay. I'm gonna do this to protect myself because there is a chance I won't be able to do what I wanna do, but we're still gonna do this. Ooh. Next turn, we'll, we got a good one going. We can kill both of those flies. Oh. Look at all these bones. Bones for days. I, nah, I boogered the wrong guy. Let's see. All right. Can we finish the job? Yeah. See that tooth up there? Watch this. Boom and bang. Now what? Now we kill him. Easy fucking peasy. I'll answer your questions between runs. Gain yellow mana. Hell fucking yeah. It's a converter, guys. One of many. And that's what I want. Beware of the corn. Let's see. This is a terrible board. Okay. So the good thing about Loaf when you're playing with the weird, every time you hit him, he spawns three dips. And you can use those dips to chain more moves into a big hit on him. But there's nothing f fabulous about this. Here he comes. This is looking bad. Looking bad, folks. Let's do this. What do we want? We want more bones, please, and thank you. Okay, here's where Gooden's going to get tough. Every time you knock him, you hit him, he knocks back. But every time you hit him, he also spawns dips. And this corny dip will hit you when he steps on you. He also goobers up the board, too. Um, 
Let's see, do I see any combos here that I could do with a remove? I don't want to use this on him. I. Okay. I only got one move, though. Alright, well. Hmm, we've got to do it. Hopefully, we'll chain into some more stuff with it. I don't want to get hit. Two moves. Ah, oh, yes, here we go. Two bones. That'll do one, two. No corn, okay. But it is going to gum up the works when he walks forward. Ooh. One move. There's no point in boogering these guys. I'm tempted to... No, it's only going to give me one. One yellow mana. Well... Hmm. All right, we're just going to set up the combo. Remember, that's there, and that's there. We got rid of some stuff. That's fine. But we got to remember, all we have to do is move it over twice, just in case it gets covered up. It's right there. I'm telling myself that so I don't forget. It's right under the bone. Did it get covered up? It didn't, but we know. It's right there. Okay. And sadly, the booger is there. We can't fucking use it because he's covered up. Ah, we're in a shitty situation again. I don't remember what any of those other tiles were. I need to destroy. I should have been getting that mana. I need brown mana. All right, we're doing it again. Um, we're going to remove... Boogers. Killing this. Um, this is a free move. And some mana. Make some more. We need both. Uh, I'd rather have bones. Here comes the poops. We'll just kind of try our best to keep chaining this. More moves, please. Okay, perfect. Alright, I'm going to fucking kill him. I'm doing it. Give me enough tiles to do it. What's the most? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's four. Four damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight. Eight is the maximum. Whatever. I'm going for it. Oh, that'll do it. That'll do it. Five damage. Ah. There. I didn't die. I didn't die. This is really good. Uh, we got the turtle shell and the little pink bow. I definitely want to gain soul hearts. And I did. What shall we do? Oh, we got to spin the wheel. So that was actually a shitty run. Uh, I didn't kill stuff efficiently enough, so I didn't get that many coins. Damage up's okay. This is one of the situations where damage up isn't going to be the greatest thing in the world. Moves are. Moves are the coolest thing. Um, we have enough to reroll the spell cost of something. I kind of want this to be different. That is way good. That is perfect. All right. Uh. I'm turning this down and stopping. All right. You guys enjoy that? Does that make any sense? I'm sure the people that are just coming in who are like, I've never heard of this fucking game before. Um, and they just saw the retweet and they don't know what the hell is going on.
but if you don't know what the fuck's going on, feel free to ask and I'll explain it. And uh, I'm going to do uh, 10 minutes of questions and then I'll play with the nimble. Let me put my chapstick on first. I'm sure you guys see me do that often. Fun fact. Um, I had a, as a child, I had a, compuls a compulsion to lick my lips until they were bloody. And even like around them, I was one of those kids with like the full on, like, uh, what's it called? Kool-Aid, like a Kool-Aid looking mustache because I would just lick, lick, lick nervously and compulsively. Uh, it was like an obsessive compulsive thing and I still have it, but I need to put chapstick on when I feel the compulsion. So if I'm stressed, if I'm more stressed out, I'll, I'll put, put chapstick on more. So there's my tell. Um, and I'm not that stressed out, but I'll definitely feel like my lips are dry and I'll need to like do something about it. Okay. I will answer your questions here. Uh, what do different mana types do? Different mana types. Okay. So different tile types yield different mana. So four boogers will make a combo that will give you four green mana and also make one booger. If you raise the combo on the board to five boogers, it would give you five green mana and then you throw two boogers. Uh, and <coughs> there are defensive tiles, there are offensive tiles, there's neutral tiles, wild card kind of tiles. Um, and you use the mana to fuel your spells, which are these things here, that you draft as you play. And that are always different. Um, okay. I, ex I explained each of the tiles. Okay. So bones. White mana. Bones are an attack spell. So if you match four, it makes one bone. If you match five, it makes two one damage bones, etc. Until it's the maximum is seven and it does an ultimate. It's an ultimate attack that I won't spoil because it looks really neat. And you guys can discover that for yourself. Teeth are also attack, attack tiles that yield one single attack that deals huge damage. So it starts out as one damage, then it goes to three damage, then it goes to five, um, and then it does a big high damage ultimate. Uh, boogers stop the enemies from taking one of their actions. Currently enemies, all like all these enemies and the enemies in the first chapter have... Uh, only one action each, so it'll actually stop them for a turn. And then poops uh, put down little barriers in the lanes, so they'll absorb one hit from an enemy, uh, and you can stack the poops taller, the maximum of three, so each of the poops can have three HP. The peas uh, yield bonus movement points, and they also scale up as well, so if you match four peas, it gives you one movement, five peas gives you two, six peas gives you etc. And it keeps going up until you match seven, and then that's the ultimate for that as well. Uh, there's also heart tiles and curse tiles, um, and those are those are all the board tiles and what they do. Uh, yes, the higher the combo, the higher the mana and effect of the tiles. This game is not pay to win. Uh, what is the system you scrapped during development that you wish would have worked? I wished it all would have worked. I mean, exploration is the biggest system that was completely scrapped. And I wish it would have worked. But this isn't Isaac. This is a puzzle game. And you can't make this long-winded exploration and then just do a slow plotting puzzle room. It just didn't work. Um, do I still work with Team Meat? No. Uh, I left Team Meat full, like four years ago, so I have no contact with them at all. I have no idea what they're working on, um, um, and I don't have any tie in with Super Meat Boy, even though um, a lot of people, that's confusing to people, I'm, I understand, but uh, I am not connected in any way anymore. What are your plans on after releasing, taking a break, or working on other projects? I'll probably take a little bit of a break for Thanksgiving and a little bit of uh, Christmas. But usually my breaks mean working on some stuff. 
and I will probably jump back into development with uh, with Tyler on Mugenics, um, which is what he's been working on while I've been working on this. Uh, and that will be really fun to work on. Um, and uh, we're going to be releasing a Gish revamp in the coming weeks as well. I was wondering what the damage points were. Uh, yeah, th so the the damage so th there's different icons for different spells. So these these spells this is a puzzle spell a puzzle spell this is a wild wild card spell uh, one that doesn't kind of fit the category. This is an attack spell. There's also defensive spells and then usable items. So I don't have any of those. Um, I would actually get one in, in the next room, uh, but. Those are all the different types, and for damage spells, there's a, there's a number here that shows the damage that you would do. This is a variable spell that deals damage, so it's a question mark. Um, and with the, uh, like I'll show you on, um, I can't, hmm. is there an easy combo here? Never mind. <laughs> uh, when you throw any of the bones and whatever else, it also shows a damage number as well, which will eventually be red to kind of work with it. Will I ever make a spewer sequel or remake? Uh, maybe eventually. Uh, are there some roguelite el elements in Bumbo like unlockables f for for characters or items? I would say that very this is very much a roguish type game. Uh, the environments are random. The, care, the, the enemies in the room are, are, are chosen from a pool of random things. The items are drafted. The board's random. Um, the, the stuff that you get is semi-random. The casino's random. It's very, it's very random, but it's more of a controlled random. Uh, we, put, we put more control variables on everything. So, like, originally the game was just full random in treasure rooms. Like, you get whatever. But it became apparent that there needed to be some structure to that. So we made the draftable, uh, we made them draftable so that you get two choices for each treasure room. And also there's, um, they're specifically placed. So the first room is always going to yield a defensive spell and a puzzle spell to choose from. And then the next one I think is going to be a miscellaneous spell or a usable item. Um, it's important that you have the options here so you get a more well-rounded a build and it makes it easier for your items to kind of talk to each other like Takara pointed out the fact that like the fact that I got a gain yellow mana converter on something with this it's really fucking good and the fact that I re-rolled this mana type into a green mana I'm not really using this that much I might actually replace it late game um, I could focus on upgrading these um, and comboing out with with these two items tied to this. Um, and the other items that I can get could definitely work in that respect too. It's just all about how you draft. Um, okay. Um, any chances you'll do chat roulette sketches? Um, yeah, that was pretty fun. I don't see why not in the future. I could, uh, I could just do it live here too if you just send me pictures. Uh... How well do I think the game will do? I think the game has a lot of potential. I mean, I think you could probably see the potential when I play. Like, if the game is unique enough. Um, and people really like Dicey Dungeons, which is like, I think, Dicey Dungeons and Slay the Spire are the two kind of comparable games that are relevant at this point. Obviously, Puzzle Quest as well and Binding of Isaac. But um, I hope it does well. Uh, I have no idea. Um... Somebody asked who my favorite programmer to work with is. Um, I've worked with a lot of programmers over the years. My favorite programmer to work with is probably Tyler, um, mostly because he's very um, matter of fact to the point. Um, he's also incredibly skilled, and he's very there's just like mellow, easygoing, and. Uh, fun to work with i don't know i mean most everybody that i that i've worked with is tends to be fun to work with uh at least while we're working on a project <laughs> but tyler i think might be my favorite of course it's not there's not nothing against against james but um you know you gotta i have to choose which which of my children i love the most and i chose tyler 
Um, okay. Favorite enemy in the game? I have no fucking clue. These guys are cool, but you can't see what I'm pointing at. Uh, these guys are cool. There's a series of blobbies in the game. There's one that looks like Gish as well. Um, and they make the first hit that they take irrelevant, and they all have like special abilities that they do. Um, and then these little pin guys back here. They're pretty. They're healers. So this, they heal. They do ranged attacks. They teleport around the room, and then they will start healing enemies that are at low health. So you have to try to get to them, which is why the beckoning finger would have been nice to have, but I don't have it. Um, I've scrolled down. Okay. With the exploration aspect, would that be something you'd consider as a DLC later down the road? No, no, it's not. It's not fun. I'm telling you, it's not fun. It's it feels like something tacked on that isn't needed, and it doesn't speak to what the game wants. Exploration in this is not fun. What it's about is what you see. Um, and I'm not gonna. If I expand it, it's going to mean more items, more kind of curse variables, more enemies, maybe some different paths. You know, that I'd want to focus on what, what already makes the game good, putting more of it in, and I'm not I'm not a fan of um, padding with, with content that I feel is not relevant to what the game is. Uh, I've got 2,000 hours in an Isaac, yet Steam didn't recommend Bumbo to me. Um, I don't know how, how it'll work. I don't know if it recommends things yet during pre-order or after launch, but I'm pretty sure that majority of people who play Isaac will eventually get an IM message ad, um, which is kind of how that works. Any chance of an Android port? Um, I'm not sure. It's really up to James um, and if it's smart for us to do. Um... The Cheddar Goblin. The Cheddar Goblin is a commercial in a movie called Mandy, which is a really interesting, fun movie. Switch release, yes. That'll eventually happen. Um, mana type and cost always the same for each item, or is it random? It's completely random. It's random in a bunch of different ways, too. So, like, a spell like the Skewer here is actually considered so behind the scenes this can this is a considered a medium mana spell which means it it's it's four mana essentially and how how that mana is generated is it's see this is also the same as this this is a large mana spell this is a medium a medium and a small and these are always different depending on what you go into except for the characters that you start with the starting items are always the same mana cost and there's that's there's a reason for that because it's focusing on it makes you focus on specific tile types when you play because that complements the character more um, but an item like this if I rerolled this I could reroll it into uh, into it just being um, four skulls or four poops. It's, it's a four mana spell. There is a chance of a PS4 port. We just have to figure it out. How did you rework the controls for the Gish remake? I couldn't really get into it because it was hard to control. Uh, we made it easier to jump. That's the number one. We fixed a bunch of bugs uh, that revolve around him getting pinched and easily. So he's more stable at this point. Uh, it's easier to control overall. But it's still Gish, you know. It's still a physics-based blob that throws itself around by expanding. So it's not going to be as intuitive as a game like Meat Boy or whatever else. Is there a max of six spells? So do you have to choose and toss them out? Uh, yes. You will eventually start having to choose what spells you want to get rid of, what spells you want to keep when you get much further in the game. Um, or just cancel and keep the items that you have. So controlled random means that there will always be available possible tile combos. No, we don't control random the board. the The board is always completely random. Controlled random, I meant when it comes to the enemies that you're fighting, they are arranged in specific difficulty levels. 
um, which appear in specific rooms, and controlled random, as in the treasure rooms. Uh, the treasure rooms not only give you specific treasures from different pools, but it also gives you specific treasures that are tied to mana costs that you don't use. So as if you guys noticed, I got this spell and this spell. Um, and when I got this spell, look, the two mana costs don't coincide with any of these, so there's no overlap, because it's not good to have. So that's one of the elements that we control. We want to make sure that the items that you get in the first couple rooms are not the same mana type as the type that your character starts with. Um, okay. Can't see the bottom spell. Well, I just move it. We're not playing. We're gonna we'll play a new run. Uh oh, Takara. Yeah, you'll be able to cancel probably in this build or the next build. You can cancel. Do I think the Northern Lion will play this uh for a bunch of episodes? I hope you will. My only my only worry now that now that I'm playing this is that <laughs> this game like it may it does it's not like Isaac where you miss a tinted rock and everybody yells at you. But if you've got a bunch of like hyper elite brainiacs in the audience that are seeing all these possible combinations and yelling at you while you're playing, I could see that being a bit intimidating and I can see it. But it also could be really fun and funny as well. So pre-recorded, I think. I think it's much much better than live. Um uh, I know Bo Bumbo want coin, but why Bumbo needs coin? His character is happy with what he has. Bumbo wouldn't be Bumbo if he has lots of coins. Why would Bumbo need coin? Well, you, that's, you gotta, you'll you have to find that out when you play. I think your questions may be answered. Hmm. Um, is this game more or less taxing than Isaac for computer processing? I'm not sure. I think it's about the same. What is the process you use to get ideas? I don't know. I sit down and I figure out what the mood and theme of the project that I'm working on is, and I figure out visuals and gameplay that will complement the theme. And then I expand on the core theme as much as possible. I strip it down to its core. This is puzzle. This is this game is a strategy game. This is a numbers game. This is a I have X moves to do Y things to gain Z mana to cast A spells to do B movement points, et cetera, et cetera. Like that's the core of this game. And that's what I try to compliment the most, which is why I removed exploration from the game because it has nothing to do with that. And I need it to always stay this. So you kind of, you find that core element of what makes the game fun and interesting and how it ties to the mood and theme of the game. And you just dress it up in ways that make sense to what you're doing. I hope that helped. Um, I don't think we're doing mod support. There will not be tr controller support at launch for sure. But I'm sure we'll probably put it in once we have it on, on console. Um, will it be translated to other languages? I don't think so. It may be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, will there be keys and bombs? I tried for there to be keys and bombs, but in exploration that there were keys, um, and there were some element of bombs. There is a bomb, uh, usable trinket, which you guys haven't seen yet. There are actually one use trinkets, kind of like tarot cards that appear. And, uh, a bomb is one of them. Um, I'll send you my idea for gamepad controls. Can I send you this on Twitter? Sure. Sure you can. Uh, how much are, am I involved in repentance? Um, I'm involved in all the new content um, and overseeing and correcting uh, old content so it fits. Um, I also oversee development, of course, and, and play test the game. Um, but anything that's, that's new, for the most part, I've had some hand in all the story, um, majority of the new bosses and um, a lot of the enemies. Uh, basically like if I'm, I'm a little more, a little more hands off than the past two DLCs, but that's mostly because a lot of the content is just improving what's there and porting over stuff from anti-birth. And for the most part, 99% of the content I'm completely okay with. And I think it works with the game. There's just a few little tweaks here and there 
a lot of like little name changes and stuff like that and some visual changes um why not play further i don't want to spoil too much i'll play further on launch <clears throat> Can we buy this in the Humble Bundle store later? I think the HP store is Humble Bundle, right? Um, yeah, sure. I don't see why not. What is the genre of game you'd like to make but haven't? I'd like to make a horror game. Not maybe like just a horror-themed game. I'd like to make a game about cats. What's your favorite game from other developers? Is God dead? Wait. Also, God is dead or Hail Satan. I don't know what the fuck that means. Um, favorite game from other developers. Uh, I like everything Terry Kavanaugh, Matt Thorson, Derek Yu, John Blow, Kyle Gabler make. I'm probably forgetting some people, but those are my favorite developers and I like all the games they make. Um, oh, um, Cactus as well. What game engine was used to make this game? It was made in Unity and programmed by James, who's sleeping. Any kinds of seeds or challenge runs? No. Uh, port to mobile? Yeah, for sure. It, it is happening. Uh, but it's not going to happen right off, right off the bat. I saw you got the full card earlier. How would that work if you remove the map? Uh, the full just... It, it restarts the room. So it rewinds kind of time, kind of. Will I remove troll pills from Isaac? No. Have I played Hollow Knight? I've played some of it. Um, thoughts on Isaac Tober? Like the Inktober Isaac? Is that what you were talking about? I don't know. I like that. Um, is controlling item pulls in the first floor too restrictive for synergies? No. No, why would it be? It's specific to help synergies. There's, it's, it's not a, the synergies don't completely revolve around the types of spells because there's shitloads of, of items within that type. Um, are you proud of what I've, what you've done? Yes, I'm very proud. I'm, I'm very proud of what we made for sure. Um, what kind of horror? Old school horror or campy horror? I'd like to do horror horror. I'd like to do creepy, disturbing horror that isn't funny at all. Well, probably re like really, really, really dark humor funny. But, you know, I'd like to make... I'd like to make a horror game that's the equivalent of Mandy or something. But who knows? I remember you... I remember seeing wild cards that you match with other... With any other mana, will that happen... What will happen if you match four of them? So this is a question we get a lot. You can't really match four of them because it will link with the other tiles that are on the uh, next to it and, and become a match five. And that's what it will do. Um, yeah, you, everybody pre-order the game on Steam right now. I tweeted the link. It's probably the link that brought you here. Pre-order it. Uh, thoughts on Eldorain the new magic set. I, th I think it's probably the best draft set that they've released in like 10 years. It's it's one of their better sets for sure. Um, thoughts on Toe Jam and Earl? I love Toe Jam and Earl. It's the original, one of the original rogue roguelike likes or whatever you want to call them. And everybody's been giving me shit about, um, about saying roguelike and, and it's such a fucking mess. But Toe Jam and Earl was one, one of the originals for sure. It's great. Uh, I feel like do a house. Yeah, House of Thousand Corpses kind of horror. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that. I mean, that's on par with Mandy as well. House of a Thousand Corpses is a fantastic movie. I started the the third in the series, and I could not watch it. And I feel really, really terrible about that because House of a Thousand Corpses is one of my favorite movies, and I really like Rob Zombie. But I have a feeling after seeing all the movies that he's done with a lower budget that one of the reasons why House of a Thousand Corpses was so good probably revolved around having a lot of people on set with him um, and having a really high production, which kind of sucks, but um, love that. Love that movie. Can you match seven hearts? Yeah, of course you can match seven hearts. You can match seven uh, curse tiles. Okay, 
you guys want to see the nimble now? Shall we go back in? Are you guys ready? We'll do that. I'll probably only get one trinket either way. Let's new game. I'll turn the volume up a little bit so you guys don't fucking scream audio at me like maniacs. Okay. I did not like Rob Zombie's Halloween movies. I feel bad about that too. I really liked House of Thousand Corpses and I really liked um, the sequel, um, even though it was a completely different movie. I actually liked Lords of Salem okay. I thought that that was nice, um, a nice little break from the usual. Uh, I did not like 31 at all, and I could not even finish the latest one. Uh, what are you going to do? Thoughts on Stephen King's books? I'm not a reader. I uh, haven't, I, I read the Tommyknockers when I was young, or tried to read the Tommyknockers. I have a very, very difficult time reading uh, fiction. I don't know why. I think my mind drifts way too much and it's it's already a struggle to focus on the words and read them and process them. And I have to say I'm doing a pretty good job reading this chat. I'm pretty proud of myself. But uh, for the most part, it's a struggle for me to read a lot and unless it's something like directions or an autobiography, for some reason I can't read fiction too well. So I haven't read many Stephen King books. I've seen a lot of Stephen King movies. I actually really like, um, what's the one with, uh, where the trucks come to life and kill everybody. Um, I like that one a lot. And I watched Carrie with the kids, uh, uh, recently and Carrie's a fucking fantastic movie. And I know they're not all true to the books, but they're good movies. Ridiculon did the music, uh, for the game. Of course they did, obviously. You want to hear a really cool and, and uh, goosebumpy type fact? If you can hear the audio that's playing right now. So Carla Kilstead is the one who's singing the lullaby in the background. And that is the voice of mom. So you can say that mom is actually singing this lullaby. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? <clears throat> favorite track from Isaac. Oh yeah. Maximum, maximum overdrive. That's, that's the one. I love that movie. That movie is so fucking funny. Great one. Great movie. Everybody should see it. Also, uh, Pet Cemetery was really good too. That was actually a creepy, scary movie. All right. One more run. Maybe I'll come back for more later. I gotta get some more work done. I've got a limited amount of time until Peach gets out of school. And we gotta go pick her up. Uh, I'll answer more questions after this playthrough. And get some nimble going. I have one child. Her name is Peach. She's at school. She's four. I also gotta eat lunch too. I'm gonna do some, let me do some, I'm gonna do some, some, uh, door dash and door dash this thing real quick. Uh, you guys gotta wait. Do other streamers do this? Am I doing this right? Do you guys just, do streamers go on their phone and then they start door dashing things? Is that kosher? Am I gonna lose followers? Like and subscribe. Hit that bell. What do I want? I want Chipotle. What do you guys want? I'm gonna order my previous order. And you guys will see live if I get fucked over by DoorDash, which happens all the time. Uh, I had one time I saw this guy just start driving and it was like the the order time kept going up and up and up and it was like an hour and six an hour and 
An hour and 56 minutes or something like that. And I noticed that he was driving south on the freeway. Like, way the fuck out of Santa Cruz. <laughs> and I'm like texting him, what are you doing? And he's like, I've got to finish another order. And I'm like, it says you're driving away. And I keep seeing him go further and further. And then he just stops responding to me. And I cancel the order. And then I had another time where... I, I did an order and then I got notification that they had picked up my food within like two minutes of the order. And I was like, how is that fucking possible? And then I look at my phone and it says that they're here at my house. And then it completed the order. Never fucking happened. But those aren't as bad as when you just don't get somebody showing up at your house at all. <clears throat> Okay, what are we doing? What are we doing? Got to get my head back in the game here. Yeah, you guys are supposed to say "Okay, Boomer" when I say when I complain about Chipotle fucking my order up. That's my that was my fun my fun story of the day. All right, Bumbo the Nimble lives in a thimble. Um. He has a needle and a toothpick, as you do when you're a tiny little dude. The needle, the needle's damage goes up every single time you hit something with it. So the more the more you use this needle, uh, the higher the damage goes. The toothpick removes a single tile. It gives you one mana of the tile type, and you know can cause chain reactions on the board. That's what his deal is. His Super special ultra passive ability is that whenever he damages anybody with any of these puzzle attacks, he gains one mana of each color. And you can chain all these things together. Uh, he's a little math guy. I can't say he's my best character. I'm not a math man. But he's fun. Alright, let's start killing. Clearing the way, clearing the way. This, this guy, I call him Tall Boy. He's a little tall poop. Uh, he's a spellcaster. He'll either summon gas or summon dip. And I'll show you what all that stuff does once we get there. Uh, that was a bad move. That was a bad move on my part. Okay. There he is. He summoned his little gas. Alright, can we do... So close to double there. What are you going to do? Alright, let's gain some mana. That was a critical hit. So, uh, the Nimble also comes with two luck, which raises your chances of a bunch of different things. Um, namely, critical attacks. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to show you what this fart does. Uh, there's going to be a little face on it soon. That's going to go up in the next build. But So whenever this guy releases gas, if you attack through the gas, the gas attacks you. And it dies when it hits you. That's why I put up that little poop shield so I could defend against it. Do I see any tiles? So the key to removing the single tile not only is taking in all of this down here, but also looking at the next row. Because the next row really matters when it comes to getting free moves and a bunch of other stuff with this. Because there's some possible cool things. Okay. I'm going to do this for now. And I'm going to do something cool next turn. I'll show you. Okay, so I'm going to move this over. One. I'm going to remove the tile here. Damn it, I didn't I fucked that up. I didn't mean to I meant, Ah damn it! Well that could have been a bigger combo and it fucked it up. I fucked it up. Fuck that. Alright. Booger. I fucked it up. Usually if you separate if you separate three, which I wasn't thinking, if you separate three and then three on the other side here and you do the combos that way, you just use one move, pull it over, and it makes a six. Um, but I stupidly did four and two. I fucked it up. 
Let's needle that guy. So our needle's up to three. So we're not going to be able to one-shot this dude. Um, let's see. Don't really want... I should just defend against this. Okay. Now we can kill him. If you remove a wild tile, I'm not sure if it's in yet. It's supposed to give you one mana of each color. I think it's in. We can always test it. Is there any combo here? Looking at the top of the board. I can set something up here. Anything else? That's fine. All right, so it doesn't matter if we attack him now. We're going to kill him. And I want to kill him with a needle. Uh, we've got our shield up, our poop shield. So the gas won't actually damage us. And we're getting in the treasure room. Okay. Oh, it's this one again. It's a whole different mana cost. Poison enemy that hits you. Don't really want to get hit. Okay, we're going to gain mana to the most common tile, which could be really good. Let's see if we can break the game and just suck up yellow mana for days. It's a lot of mana to go, but it'll give us, I think, four mana or maybe more, depending on how much is on the board. This is a new spell. I haven't used it but once. So I'm gonna have to strategize around it. It does require some finessing, but it's pretty easy for this character to gain two mana of each color. I'm gonna do it next turn. For now, I'm gonna protect myself. I didn't mean to throw it there, I fucked up. That'll be okay though. Let's see. So I want there to be lots of yellow on the board. I want to get rid of... I really also need gray mana. There's no good moves. I've got one there and one there. Okay. Kill this guy. Gain one mana of each color. And then hope we've got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Damn. There's, it's going to give me green mana when I do that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I want there to be more yellow mana on the board. And more yellow mana on the board. Now, gain me mass. Fuck you, you bastards. Let's fucking kill everything now. Told you I was cool. And what do we need? What do we need? We need one green. We just need one green. That can be ranged. Bam! There's the fucking game, guys! It's the fucking game! Tell your friends! Tell your friends about what happened. Look at me, my giant brain. I feel so smart. Alright, we've got a champion here. Champions aren't going to appear that often until you get to a certain point in the game that I am at. Um, I believe this guy may explode. I think. It looks... Well, unless that's a heart on his forehead and then he might heal. Uh, they aren't as common um, as in Isaac. So I'm going to learn as I go. What should I do here? Now it's really all about breaking this, breaking this here. This is this is the name of the game right there. We're gonna break it. I'm not seeing anything good here, and we're gonna get fucked. 
All right, we're still gonna start out defensive. We're going to bugger that guy and pray. Oh my lord. Okay, one, we're just gonna need to get the toothpick going as well. Okay, there. It's down to two, oh, critical, thank you, thank you. Um, what do we need to get this going? Um, we just need one. No, we need one of each. Damn, we just need like one combo here. So we can take two tiles away. Take two tiles away and give me another action point. I can't take three tiles away. All right, we'll just, I feel like this is better to do. Because we got two moves for that and we still filled this up we can kill this guy we know we're not gonna do the thing that we but I can also fuel this too like as long as I do things correctly I can fuel any of my single use moves my single mana moves um, okay I'll use one move to kill the fly and fuel everything okay so what am I sucking up? It looks like it's poop. I don't need that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I don't need poop mana. So that's worthless to me. I need gray mana. But I do see a turd shield that I can do here. Um. What, what, what now what now what do I do I guess I'll just take him down a notch okay that works what do we got on the board yeah it's still gonna be brown all right take your turn oh there's one I gotta write this down that when enemies, when Tato type enemies prime, they no longer have, they no longer have their crowns. When champions prime. No crown. All right. All right, if we get rid of this poop line here, then poop is no longer the most common, and it looks like it might be uh, teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think it's yellow. Let's do it. No, it wasn't. It was teeth. Okay. Um, and then from there, we can just go wackadoo. Let's see. Now it's got to be, let's just make sure. There it is. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just scribbles. I just, uh, I got, I look, I, I want to look like a game developer. Got these little wiener flies flying at me. No, I fucked up. I fucked up. Don't fuck up, kids. Oh, there's got to be a combo somewhere. Whatever. He's dead. If I wouldn't have fucked it up, he would have been dead. Mana caps out at nine. Hmm. Oh my god. There's so many things I can break right now. Plus one luck for the room. That's something you double down on too. 
especially with the needle. This is really tempting. So this is a usable item that gives you plus one movement. And it gives you plus one movement for every one charge you get. And you gain a charge for clearing a room. So every room you're going to get plus one movement. So it's a huge upgrade. It's essentially mo one movement. It just takes up a slot in your, in your inventory. Gaining plus one luck for the room is more fun. I'm going to take it. I'm going to re-roll the cost as well and hope I get something good. But here we go. All right. Well, might as well start poking. This is uh, Peep Jr. or Peeper. He doesn't do much, but his eyes will fuck you up. They are invincible. They don't take any damage, but they're slippery because, you know, there's a little blood on the bottom of them. So if you hit them, they'll slide to the left and slide to the right. Their job is to defend their host. I guess it's not, he's not their host. I don't know what he is. He's their daddy. Defend their daddy from oncoming attacks. So they're going to try to get in the way and attack me. Every once in a while, he's also going to try to fuck me up. Um, and we're going to try to make sure that doesn't happen. This is a good combo. Anything that does multiple hits with, uh, with the nimble is going to yield... Mucho mana. And we've already got multiple spells enabled right now. Uh, it looks like the most t common tile on the board is Boogers. Nine. Yeah, I don't need that. Um, but I do want more luck. I want to do some criticals. Okay. I want something good here. Let's do this. Here they go. All right, so peeps lined up. We're fine, we've got a shield. Um, but we need to hit him. Boogering is not gonna do much. Nothing is lined up at all here. Hmm. This is kind of a waste, but at least we get one of our spells up. Knock that guy out of the way. Is there anything we can do good? Do good. Is there any teeth up here? There's a tooth there. Nothing spectacular here. We don't want to booger. We do not want to booger the eyes because we don't want. We want them to kind of move move around. Oh, we can do something wacky here. next turn okay so next turn we'll flip that over into a five and that's that all right now the eyes are primed it's irrelevant to this I wish he was da being damaged instead now we've got to plan both our def offensive and defensive maneuvers here so we're gonna do this and just keep that guy down. We are gonna take a damage here. I do want to gain more luck, but what do we get? What's the most here? It doesn't look like anything's the most. It looks like boogers. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's eight. Definitely eight. Can we get these boogers out of here and also yield more P? Let's do that. Any other P here? Damn, there's not. Well, there should be mostly P. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Now we just gotta hope for some criticals. Come on, luck. We got three. Give us a critical. Give us a critical. You motherfucker. Oh well. Too bad. It's going, it's going to keep going. That was a critical. Easy. Easy. The rainbow bag. I shouldn't even be showing you that. Uh, take the rainbow bag. Uh, how do we do? Not that great. 
Um, let's see what we would get here. As you can see, there's more luck on the board for the Nimble because that's what he's about. A oh, movement. This is a good run. And we got three coins. And we're going to reroll the spell cost of luck. Ugh. Made it worse. Whatever. <sighs> okay. Let me check. Let me see where this Chipotle order is. Where are they? They're at UCSC. What the fuck are they doing there? You UCSC kids. Okay. Let's, um... I want to be the hot girl. Does it look right? Do I look like the hot bum bat? Okay. Uh, Pre-order the game. The game's up for pre-order. I'll go to the donation box. Oh. You can't go wrong with the roulette wheel. There's uh there's some serious gambling undertones or overtones in Bumbo. It'll be very apparent as you play. Okay, I've got um a little bit of time to do more questions and answers and then I'm going to get back to work. I'm pretty fucking happy with this build. Um, I only ran into one little edit, which is fantastic. I've still got to play through. I'm still uh, doing some tweaks and tunes on one of the secret characters that you haven't seen. Um, make him a little harder to use and make his turns not take so long. We'll see if I can do that. I have an idea of what I want to do. But feel free to, first I'm going to say spread the word, make sure everybody knows the game's up for pre-order, and if you pre-order right now, it's 15% off on Steam, etc, etc. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye. But more importantly, retweet my tweet, so more people will see that the game is up, and uh, I hope they just, my hope is that they just see the, 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 uh, the sales visual of the cardboard aesthetic and they're just like, I wonder what that is. And then they, they click it and then they're like match four. Bah! Boo. And then they say, I've really, I think, I, am I the only one tired of Edmund's aesthetic? I read that. I read that on Reddit. Someone said that. Okay. I've lost a lot of weight. Uh, not a ton. I, over the past year, I've lost 20 pounds. Um, I lost the weight because I changed my diet due to allergies. So it wasn't super intentional. But if you're comparing me to like in the movie when I was at my fattest, um, I've lost like 35 pounds. <laughs> so or you could say that over the past 10 years since the movie was filmed, I've lost 35 pounds, which I guess is substantial. But I haven't lost that much weight. Um, just think of me as a fatter guy than I am. <clears throat> if I beat level two, you pre-order? You're going to pre-order anyway. Come on. Come on. Who are you kidding? I'll beat chapter two. Maybe like the day before release or the night or something. Will we fight any of the sins? Uh, you'll have to play the game to see. But I can tell you that this tale is a little bit different than Isaac. Uh, there are going to be parallels. There are going to be nods. There are going to be things that you will realize. And your head will explode. There will be... There will be... Takara doesn't even know about all the cutscenes yet. Because one of them has been intentionally not shown. Um... But there is a cutscene that will that gives me crazy goosebumps and makes me feel bad. <laughs> so I'm hoping that people live stream that and then they can just kind of be like, "Oh wow, that's that's yucky. That's a whole bunch of yuck." 
Uh, Steam achievements, yes, eventually. I don't know if they'll be at, at launch, depending. They're, they're low priority at this point. I'd like the game to have all of its sound effects and all of the little bits and pieces of polish by launch. And we've got six days to do it. And I'm also working on a trailer and I'm working on press and I'm working on promos and I'm working on play testing and then organizing all the play testers and gathering bug fixes and all that sort of stuff too. So I don't know if we'll get achievements in at launch, but definitely within like the first launch month, they'll be there. Um, I haven't played an Edmund game since Afterbirth. So for me, it's nice coming back to that aesthetic. Uh, if you haven't played a game that I made since Afterbirth, you should really play The End Is Nigh. It's probably one of my best games. Um, and not as many people played it as my other games. Probably because it wasn't tied to Isaac. And I think I didn't really do any press for it. Did I like Dicey Dungeons? And what did I think about it? I love Dicey Dungeons. I love everything that Ta Terry uh, Kavanaugh makes. Um, I'm a big fan of his. And I talked to him online and I like Dicey Dungeons and I was very grateful for it releasing because it was something that I could kind of point at when it when somebody asked me what Legend of Bumbo was I could say it's kind of like this game it's closer I always said it was a puzzle quest like um, nobody knows what that is now because you guys are all young and I'm old but back in the early 2000s there was a game called Puzzle Quest in it it was pretty cool. Um, it was like an RPG game where you used a puzzle board. It was very Bejeweled Match 3. Uh, and I thought it was really interesting. And I always wanted to make a game that was like it. And I finally did. And, and, and around that time, um, I think Slay the Spire came out within the first year of development of Bumbo. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like got that mini draft aesthetic or mechanic, I guess you could say. So I tried to like say, oh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Slay the Spire. It's a little like Plants vs. Zombies, turn-based. Um, and then Dicey Dungeons came out and I was like, ah, oh, like, I think that's the closest of what it is. It's the, it's the closest to, it's not really like Dicey Dungeons, but it's the closest to its design um, and genre, which I think people are calling the roguelike deck builder genre or whatever. So I'm kind of going with that. And so, yeah, I, I liked Dicey Dungeons. It was really cool. Um, uh, are Bumbo and Isaac brothers? You'll have to play the game to find out. And you're not going to find out anything until you actually beat the game. And you should know, if you've played any of my other games, especially with Isaac, that you'll have to get a little further than you would have, you know, you may expect initially in order to see the final ending of the game. What else does luck affect besides critical chance? Luck affects the amount of coins you get. There is a lucky coin within the bag. There's a chance that you get that. Um, there's also a chance of all, all the items. Uh, there's a lot of passive items that say like chance of wilds on kills. And behind the scenes, that'll be something like 15 to 20%. And for every tick you have, that goes up by like 5%. Same thing with like critical hit chance and stuff. Uh, it just goes up by an increment for everything. So it affects quite a few things. Um, is the secret character secret? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is Ouroboros on ice for now? Yes. There were elements of it that were really cool. Um, and I really liked it and it eventually became the end is nigh for the most part. Uh, but uh, the circular turning visual mechanic to it actually made people feel motion sick and we tried to fix it multiple times and we just kind of couldn't. So it kind of killed the, the, the little, the, it killed one of the things we were trying to do with it and it made it more frustrating. So we, frustrating. So we decided to turn it into the end is nigh. Um, do I like Undertale? I've never played Undertale. It's not really my type of game. I probably will play it. Um, I kind of want to see what the appeal is. Um, and I know it's more dialogue character. I know people like the characters and stuff. And I know with Mugenics, it's going to be more of a character-driven character game and less of my 
traditional focus on um, gameplay mechanics, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to focus more on story. Story. Well, the story for me is character development. So I've got a bunch of characters that I want to develop. So I want to check and see if Undertale did something like that, because I know that there are characters in that game that people reference a lot. So I want to see why they do. But I don't know anything about it. Is Bumbo human? No. Well, if Gertie is human or Larry, if they're human, then yes, he's human. Um, and does Nye right now is one of my favorite games, but it gives me a lot of anxiety. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's the intention. It's probably one of the reasons why it didn't uh, sell as well as I thought it might. Um, one of many reasons. It's not the most accessible game when it comes to theme. It's a depressing game. It's also a very anxiety-driven game. It's supposed to be like that. Everything in that game is designed around making you feel like you're kind of having a panic attack, and it's never going to end, <laughs> which isn't the most appealing thing to play, but it's actually really well done, and I, I wish more people would play it, but I, I understand if, if it's too difficult or stressful for people. Will you keep adding new stuff to Bumbo? Um... Like I said, we're down to the line. We've got six. We've got six days to complete the game and get a bunch of stuff in. And there's no doubt in my mind that there'll be a few things that end up being added in post um, after release. And uh, if the game sells really well, for sure, like I could see us adding more stuff to the game. Um, have I ever attempted to learn programming and work on games solo? Yes, um, back in the Flash days, I did attempt to learn how to do basic script stuff, which I was able to do, and I hated it. I, it is the opposite of what I do, completely. It didn't feel rewarding in any way, and it felt like I couldn't, it felt like work. It felt like I, I couldn't see myself continuing this, and also doing art and story and all the other stuff that I do. I don't want to work on things solo. It's already depressing and isolating as it is just working with one person. And uh, I, working solo seems... I used to work solo when I, when I did comics and I was a depressed mess. And my comics showed that. <laughs> so I, I have no... I, I don't think... Uh, I don't think I'd ever attempt that again. Also, I do, I do feel like the best, there's a really cool yin yang type man, woman, oh, don't take that the wrong way, <laughs> you know, uh, like joining of somebody who's very technically minded and somebody who's abstract. Um, there's this, there's, it's the puzzle, the puzzle fits together really nicely and, um, I, I always like to feel like that when I'm when I'm working with somebody when I'm working with a programmer, I feel like we're we've got a, a an actual fully functioning left and right side of of a, their of a brain, and we are we are one unit. We have made one person. We're a giant monster. Are you sure that during trimming the fat phase you didn't cut some really good features? Anything you're still not 100% sure about? I'm sure I cut a bunch of good features. It's just not appropriate for this game. There were a lot of interesting things that I thought were neat, but there were things that were impossible to balance, made the game unfun, um, made the game too, take too long, uh, made the game not look the way I really thought it should look, realistically. Who do I main in Smash? I haven't played Smash in quite a while. Um, my go-to for what was Wario for a while. Okay. Uh, I've ha I already answered Hollow Knight questions. Okay. Um, have I gotten all the achievements in the end is nine? No, of course not. I've gotten the majority though. I can beat the game pretty easily, and I can, I can uh, do all that. I can beat all the, all the the carts, but, and even the All Star cart. I've done that, and I've beaten the Tower of Ascension, but I've not like, no deathed all the carts and stuff like that. Um, what do I dislike about Isaac right now? 
Uh, the one thing I dislike about its design is that the story bosses, like Mom, Mom's Heart, Satan, you know, the ending type bosses, aren't randomly chosen. It doesn't feel as randomly generated. I don't like that aspect. Um, I wish I could come up with a better full random experience. There's a lot of ideas that I had um, that will be implemented in Repentance that I was saving for Isaac 2. But I don't know when Isaac 2 is happening, uh, so we put some of it in. But for the most part, I would like to explore those other shortcomings that I feel like Isaac has. Um, I, I like to address them in a sequel because they need to be a remade game to really do whatever. Do I get funding from publishers <coughs> or do I bootstrap development myself? Uh, I do both. Um, I got some funding. It kind of fell out of the sky for the Legend of Bumbo on iOS from a company called The Label that were really all about it. And they offered a good amount of money funding and I did initially turn it down and then James was like, no, like <laughs> I'm here too and I need money. Uh, so I did that. So it was more, I think it's more, it's more comfortable, especially for James to take money from a publisher as opposed to just me funding the project and me taking take him taking money from me. It became it became more of like an outside source situation. But all my other games for the most part are just self-funded. The End is Nigh was completely self-funded. Uh, the original Binding of Isaac was completely self-funded. Um, uh, Super Meepo was, was funded by us as well. Um, could you and James... Ah, where'd it go? Could you and James add some visual indication on the board on which tile you're selecting when you hover over it? Also, some of the visuals indicate what tiles are... Um, wait, wait. Also, some visual indication of what the tiles are that are going to be erased with his hook item. Oh, you mean the blender blade. Um, yeah. Uh, mouse over stuff is in the polish list. I would like to do it. Uh, don't know for sure if it'll make it into the final game or not, but that is definitely something that is on the list that we would like to add. One sec, Chipotle is calling me or texting me. That's weird. I got a double, a double text saying that it's on the way. <clears throat> 20 minutes. Okay. How many for you pre-ordered the game if you did post it? A emoji. No? Okay. What build is this? The roulette uh, lady seems dead. She's not dead. She's slowly bobbing. She's bobbing around. She's just not changing as much as maybe this guy is. Did I like the Invader Zim special? Don't tell Joan in this, but I haven't seen it yet. I'm sure I will eventually. I wasn't really big into... Invader Zim, I kind of missed the missed the boat. Um, I was into his comics. Uh, and that's how I knew him. And that's what I liked. How many endings in Bumbo? Enough. There are quite a few. Enough, though. Thanks for pre-ordering the game. A lot of you are saying you pre-ordered. Thank you. James also says thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I have a feeling you will. Please tell the world. Thoughts on Ash vs. the Evil Dead? I only saw the first two episodes. The first episode was really good. Second episode wasn't that great. I think we saw some of the third episode and it wasn't that great. And then we just reprioritized our day and started watching other things. I, I like Sam, Sam Raimi movies a lot, but um, wasn't a huge fan of that series. But uh, there's always the chance to jump back in. I own the whole, the whole lot of it. Have I played Cave Story? I think I play through Cave Story every year. That's one of my favorite games. Yes, I've played Cave Story. Um, are there deals with the devil and angel? There was originally going to be deal with the devil items. That was cut. Um, a lot of the design in Isaac when it comes to angel devil deals feels win more-ish, which means 
you're are if you're are if you're good and you're already winning there's a high chance of you getting more items so that is a kind of a flaw in isaac's design and with this i couldn't come up with a great way to balance that so i didn't put it in <clears throat> okay okay was i happy with the way four souls turned out yes very the four souls launch design everything everything related to four souls was a breeze super fun to work on and super proud of everything and i actually look forward to jumping back in and doing some more maybe next year and for those of you that don't know i'm sure you all know there was a binding of isaac card game called four souls that came out last year on uh, kickstarter and now you can still order it online as well as at uh, target which has been selling out everywhere which is really surprising to have like a like my games, the stuff that I work on, it's it has sold well online to a bunch of weirdos that you, you guys are the weirdos, um, which is a niche market, but it's still a large market. Now to have something actually sell well at a physical retail place like Target is pretty unheard of. It's, it's, it's crazy for me to like hear, oh yeah, they've ordered multiple, they're gonna be ordering for the next few months because it keeps selling out in Target. So super cool, super happy. Everything about it was an amazing experience and I, I'm happy that I did it because I almost didn't do it because when somebody approaches you and says, you know, I want to do a Kickstarter, I want, because <laughs> the initial approach was, we want to turn The Binding of Isaac into a board game. And I was like, who are you? No, you, that's not going to happen and that's a terrible idea. And it took me a year of them like kind of coming back and asking like, how could we make this work? And then me thinking like, well, well, what if I did turn it into a card game? Like, how would that look? How would the Binding of Isaac look like as a card game and a multiplayer game at that? <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and then it finally came to me and it's like, oh, that seems like a good idea. But I almost said completely no. Like I've almost just, I did. I pushed it away for quite a while until I was like, well, I think I told them like, if I ever have an idea, I'll let you know. And then one day I did. Um... Uh, is this game awful for colorblind people? No! We actually went through this game and made sure that colorblind people could play it. So we put symbols for all the mana stuff. So I don't know if you could see before... I'll, I'll skip to this. I'll skip to the Forlorn Hollow really quick. Um, yeah, colorblind is always something that we push for accessibility. It's an easy one to do and a lot of people are colorblind. But as you can see, the mana symbols up here are all tied to shapes. And the mana symbols here are all tied to shapes. So no, you can totally still play this game. What the fuck happened? <laughs> you guys see this? Did I... I have completely different items. Completely different items. My starting item's even different. What the fuck would have done that? I've never seen that before, ever. Oh my god, I know what it is. I'm so stupid. <laughs> I'm writing down a bug and it's staring me in the face. Okay, this is a spoiler. A uh, spoiler for an item that may or may not be unlocked in the game. Um, the rainbow bag reshuffles all your items after you beat a chapter. So I just fucked myself over. Why would I have taken that, huh? Well, I took it because I didn't think I was going to show this chapter. Fuck you. You guys can't see that. It's against the rules. Will there be champion, champions crowned bosses in Bumbo? Currently, there are no champions, but I don't see why why there couldn't be in um, in expansions. Um, is there a reason why every figure in Four Souls is designed based on their card artwork except for Dark Judas? Um, I think it was because Dark Judas, the card wasn't designed yet when we made Dark Judas. In fact, I'm pretty sure I made Dark Judas because it was a cheap way to do an extra figure um, to kind of tack on. And I, I always liked having like limited edition alt art ones. Dark Judas was initially just going to be like a one in 20 chance if you get a Judas that it'll be a Dark Judas. 
And then I asked online about how people felt about something like that. And they said, no, no. And they were really mad about it. So I was like, oh shit, well, we've already done it. So can we just print that as an even number so we can put that in, in one of the expansion um, uh, figure list? So, and after the fact, I was like, well, I got to turn Dark Judas into a card. And I did. And that's why it's like that. Yeah, you guys saw it. The rainbow bag did it. And I thought it was going to be a bug. <laughs> and I was frantically writing down why that happened. But it was the rainbow bag and I forgot that I had it. What are you going to do? You just th it's okay. It's not a bad item if you know that you're doing it. Trust me. It's a challenging item though. But there are some advantages to it. Okay. Um, will there be secret floors? No. Is any of the fan theory real? I assume you mean for Isaac? Uh, yeah. Sure. A lot of the fan theories that I hear um, seem to be true. Um, and if you need confirmation on any specifics, I have a feeling that Legend of Bumbo will fill you in on them. Will this game have a normal mode and a hard mode like in regular Isaac? Um, it will have a normal and hard mode like in Isaac, but not in the way that you choose. The game will scale in difficulty the more you play and the more you unlock. Um, and that's that. Um, no modding, at least not currently. This game does not play well if you're blind. Like if you're just, just regular blind. People who don't have eyes or corneas or um, really bad glaucoma or... Um, or fifteen dollars. You're not gonna like. You're not gonna like the game. You're not gonna be able to play it. What happened before the end is nigh. The world ended. Spoiler: You might find out what happened before the end is nigh in Eugenics. Does Bumbo have parents? I don't know. I think so. Um. What kind of map Bumbo has compared to Isaac? Multiple rooms, dead ends, secret rooms? No. It doesn't have anything. It's got a series of three rooms, two treasure rooms, and a boss room in each chapter. And we played around with that formula, like scaling it up so there's more enemies to fight as you go, etc., etc. It wasn't fun. We trimmed that down. We trimmed it down. And now it's just three rooms, two treasure rooms, boss room, trinket. That's not a really room, but it's a trinket reward at the end and then a casino zone. And that's all you need to worry about. This game is definitely not about the frills. It's not about the extras. It's it's a, It strips itself down to exactly what the game is. And um, trust me when I say that it, it's all the better for it. Um, will there be challenges? No. Uh, Bumbo is on meth. Yes. Is... Bumbo a game is Bumbo a game that's very long and hard to finish. Um kind of. I'd say medium. I I put it I put it right okay, if you guys have played the Flash version of the Binding of Isaac, the original one that was released before the mini expansion came out, it's on it's on par with that when it comes to replayability and unlocks. If that helps. You can't play this game if you're not born yet. So don't don't purchase don't purchase this game. Don't have your mom purchase the ga this game for you if you're not born. Um because you won't be able to play it until you are. Deaf people can play this game. Mhm. Mm Deaf people can play this game. There are no audio cues that are needed. Uh is Bumbo related to Isaac genetically? Maybe. I mean, isn't everything Isaac, right? Everything's Isaac, isn't it? Why does Bumble want coin? Because it was taken. Because it was stolen. And it was a lucky coin. It was a good one. Can you describe how many spells and items there are curr there currently are? Okay, I think I posted this recently. I think there are 120... Wait. No. There's 201 items. And I think there are like 78 or 80 trinkets and the rest are spells and they're for the most part broken up into the categories i mentioned before which are attack spells puzzle spells defensive spells usable items and wild card spells 
if that makes any sense to you. They're all completely different. And they're always different mana cost. And they always tie into each character differently. Is Bumbo a pirate? A butt pirate? So yes. There's some kind of promo promotional event for streamers or something. It would be impressive to see a game about one or two days before the official release. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's good to do, what's not good to do. I'm sure I can give codes to streamers and stuff like that to do the. I think the day of release is usually better though. Are the monsters in the end is nigh genetically warped cats? I'm sure some of them are. Um, what's the most special thing about this game to you? Uh, I can't talk about that. <laughs> I can't talk about what I what's the most special thing to me without spoiling stuff. But I'd say there are a lot of elements, and I think maybe uh, James could say this as well. I could speak for him. Uh, there are a lot of elements of this game that are tied to our childhood. So it, it was a treat and also kind of a uh, almost difficult thing to explore when working on. And um, I think it comes through in a really honest way. And I think that's really neat. And I think some aspects of the game that I don't want to spoil are really cool and um, personal to both of us in, 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 in some way, an, in enough of a way to make it feel significant and artistic. You may not see it as that, but to me, that's one of the things I think is most special about it. Um, okay. For the art process of Rebirth, would you draw the sprites at actual size and draw them at scale? I didn't do the pixel stuff. I already had the sprites for the most part in, um, and then the stuff that was added that was new, I would draw in flash and they would reference or scale down. We already talked about colorblind people. That's the game works for colorblind people. That was the joke we kept making. Hmm. What else is there? I gotta get off of this thing soon. We've gone, we've gone too far. Uh, will we know who took the frickin' coin and we'll be able to punish them? Yeah, kinda. You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll see. You'll figure it out. What age rating would you give this game? Seeing as Isaac was kind of gory. It's hard to say. Um, I think that anybody, anybody can handle this. It's just poo-poo pee-pee humor. Uh, the only thing ESRB would have an issue with would probably be some of the themes and the stuff that we, I can't talk about and the needles. Anything with needles and pills usually will automatically get an M rating, depending on the severity of it. It might get a teen. I think it's very teen. I don't. I don't know. What am I getting from Chipotle? I get. I'm getting a bowl. A bowl of mostly chicken, chicken guacamole and um, beans. Uh, yeah, I'll stream day of release. I'll give out codes to people. If you guys want to tweet at me and tell me like who I know that like Huts and Northern Lion and um, Cobalt and a few other big streamers that play a lot of Isaac stuff are definitely going to get codes and I'll make sure that they have them so they can start streaming and playing at launch. Why so much poop? Because poop is cool. Um, I'll give one to Zach Scott as well. Um... Who's behind the bushes in the box art? Oh, what do you mean? Who, there's I don't know what you're talking about. What age rating would I give Isaac? I mean, I guess it's mature. But I mean, I think still kid, young kids can play it and not have any idea what's going on. Like a lot of the, the stuff that would make it an M, I think they wouldn't understand. Um, what's your approach on minimum viable product? I don't know what that means. Why is the boss called the Duke and Bumbo instead of the Duke of Flies? Well, there's a reason. I can't tell you, though. Chicken and guac is OP. Yeah, it is. And I get double chicken. Deal with it. Do you still sketch things out on paper before doing them digitally? Um, when I'm... When I have... 
when I'm brainstorming, I need to see it. So I do sketch it on paper. So a lot of a, a lot of the game, a lot of all of my game's initial designs, I will sketch out on paper first. Um, in fact, before I, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look in my other uh, sketchbooks and see if there's anything I can show that may be Bumbo related or or whatever. There's a lot of them here. I've got. Um, I show. I have it, there's. Three sketchbooks here that that span ten years of designs that may or may not ever see the light of day, and I and I've got two books downstairs that I forgot to bring up, and I have a feeling that those are the ones that will feature the most. Here's one of the sketches for Fingered. You can barely see it, but you can see kind of the line up there. That was uh, one of the first sketches for that. So many games that I've not ever made. This is some... This is me figuring out the probabilities of the donation box in Isaac and what would unlock and why. Here's more fingered, this is fingered sketches for different visuals that are tied to different types. Here's some Ether 2 sketches, which was actually worked on very briefly and will probably be worked on again. There's actually a lot of Ether, Ether 2 stuff in here. I can't show you that. Some early. I was gonna make a magic cube with all fake cards. A lot of it eventually turned into four soul stuff. Here's some one of the carts in uh, the end is an eye. Can't remember which cart that is. It's purple and white. I still sketch out mechanics on paper. Here's a Mugenic sketch. Some End is Nigh cutscene sketches. All right, what's in this? Here's Ouroboros. This is tons of Ouroboros stuff. Some bosses. Oh, my food's here, guys. I'll be back. Actually, I won't. I'm going. <laughs>